So um, when you guys, like, let's say you want to make an expensive purchase that's outside the budget, let's say you guys budget together and you disagree, how does that sort of work? Someone wants to buy a house and the other person is saying, no, let's wait. I want to buy a car now and he's saying, no, wait. He's saying, I want, like for me, when it comes to, to, to certain things, you know, men don't really appreciate home decor. So when I'm talking about your, you know, your couch, your rug, you know, the nice things that make a house a home. So to me, the... I might see something that's on bargain. I'm saying, there's something at macro and it's it's on sale. Can we get it now? And you'd be like, no, it's not on the budget. It's not necessary. We don't need it. But in as far as I'm concerned, it's necessary and we need it. So how do you guys sort of work around those disagreements? Tough one. <laughs> I haven't gotten that. <laughs> we haven't been there. <laughs> oh, for me, you haven't been there, so I want to know. <laughs> you know, um, okay, we 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 haven't had many situations like this before, because um, my my spouse is generally that sort of person who feels if you've got the money and you want it, get it now. I'm the one who sometimes wants to say, ah, wait. Like oh. recently, we were hurtling. We were recently hurtling over getting a, um, a there's a, a fridge that he wants, and um, he's the one who's normally the bigger spender. Um, and okay, okay, okay. I, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. But what I've realized is sometimes I didn't say to him wait, and then I explain to him why I feel uh, we can't do it right now because A, B, C, and D. You know, yep. and then I obviously show him that because this takes precedence. I understand you want this, but this takes precedence at the moment. Yeah. So when it comes to like um, issues to do with debt, for example, like um, if you had found out like that your partner had debt prior, or if you know for people that are dating right now and their partners have debt, how do you think the debt should be cleared when they then get married? I think it depends with the dates. <laughs> with the amount. <laughs> <laughs> no, not with the amount. What type of debt it is, you know? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because um, yeah, yeah, yes, he's supposed to help each one. other. <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to help each other. Yes, like well, if you're, for example, if you're newly married couples, right? Of course, you're supposed to help each other. You know, when it comes to debt, because of course it will definitely affect you you know if mm. your partner has debt maybe your your parents are sick and probably they need a chunk of money you know so it's it's very important to actually then help each other so and that's what, what i was saying you know it depends on the debt Sorry? what if he takes um what if he takes a loan without without letting you know you know, like you guys were saying that sometimes the husband is the one who's responsible for um, <laughs> catering for groceries and paying the kids' school fees. And my responsibility is paying, the, is making sure that the maid and the gardener are sorted and, you know, all the other things. But what if he, he, he can't, he's not telling you that, you know what, things are not uh, balancing anymore and he decides to take a loan for whatever reason and he just doesn't tell you. It all depends. Uh, if your marriage is based on a godly, uh, your foundation is godly or is just a ordinary foundation. Because um, when we look uh, in the um, more in the Christianity society, uh, his debt becomes yours. You are now one flesh, one blood. Uh, I, uh, that's how it is. In the Bible. So that means you then... Uh, uh, take up the debt, no, no matter how it is, or you have not been explained of it. It's um, it's it's all about the foundation of your marriage. Okay, because I also think that you know, if my husband decides to take a loan without letting me know, um, as much as yes, you know, I'm a Christian wife, and the Bible says what's mine is yours, and legally, the moment you get that marriage certificate, you're accountable for each other's debt, whether you like it or not. I will definitely have to hold him to some, I will have to find a way of holding him accountable so that he knows that, you know, you can't just do that. Yes, yeah. um, we're going through a difficult time, then communicate, let me know that things are not working out. And I, I think sometimes when, um, as sometimes as wives, we, we, we tend to forget, or even spouses, sometimes the people there who don't even know how much their spouses actually earn, you know? 
You don't know whether they actually, because they've never seen the pay slip. You've been told that I get 10,000. And then um, maybe when you first got married, you was getting maybe 10,000 US dollars, whatever it is. And then you got a bonus or you got an increment at some point and just never told you about it. Mm. And someone is actually, you know, spending money or having a secret account or stuff like that. And it's very easy for someone then to, 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 to just do stuff like that. But I think if you are very much aware of what your partner owns and you know, because you've seen the pay if you know what they own, uh, how much they earn, then definitely you, you will know that, okay, these costs, or oh, they, they're too high. His salary will not be able to cover it. Because you can't just assume that, okay, so he, he's got it covered. You also need to be very clear and very, um, very much in the know. And I guess that leads back to transparency between couples when you, when you, when you decide to get married. Uh, you know, this, top, this, this uh, particular issue, hey, it is very, very real in a lot of marriages. Very real. There are spouses who make big financial decisions without the other spouse knowing. Mm. And uh, then you discover either by one day while she at home, um, the, what, do you call the, what do you call those guys, those dead people? Come oh, and tell you. And they come. Uh, or some will come and repossess your house. I've, I've, I know quite a, a few people who have lost their homes wow. because these spouses made big financial decisions. When you borrow, borrow against your house or borrowing against car and you don't know. Um, so they're very, very real issues. And um, it's, 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 a, it's a challenge because it happens to, you know, even people who have the, the, the perfect looking marriages. I think the most important thing is to be transparent um, regardless. If you if you find someone makes such a, a, a big bloop like that, especially people who want to take risks for starting businesses or running businesses, some of them make such big decisions. And mm-hmm. they can't come and explain it to their spouse because you're not going to understand. But you're feeling, no, this deal, I tell you, I can make so much from it, so let me just make this decision. And it turns patient and the family loses out. And I think it's like Rufaro mentioned, it's important for that particular spouse to be held accountable for that decision. So even if we're going, if we're going to help each other get out of it, because with marriage, we remember we say those vows. We are told you stand before God if you had a, 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 yeah, a, a wedding. Vows. Yes, those vows. Those vows. I mean, mm, hey, okay. you know, they're nice to say they're on the altar. Living up yeah. to them is another story. They mean more than we actually know they mean. Even if you if you didn't get to say the vows, if you did it traditionally, that whole um, the 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 whole what you call it, calling people together and uh, tell them and announce to them is making a commitment before God to tell them that I'm going to be with this person for the rest of my life. So you are obviously going to be implicated in whatever it is that this person makes a decision on. And yes, you then have to. Be angry, scream, fight, shout, whatever, but sit down and fix it together. But at the same time, the spouse must be held accountable. And holding someone accountable may be if that person earns 10000 and their repayment is 9000 a month, they must make those payments. You get it? They should make those payments, even if it means you go without your salary. As in the person who has made that decision. Even if it means they get because a second job, if you are in an economy that allows you to get a second job. That allows you. You have to, yes, you see. So pay it. Pay whatever it is. And you check. You need to check. Are you making these payments, you know, on a monthly basis? So it, it, it's, it's as if, you, sometimes it's as if you're being a, a parent or a prefect, but it will make that person think twice or three times about making such decisions on I their agree. own. Accountability should be part of this. It's a difficult thing, but look, if it's there, someone has to be accountable. Okay. So how are you guys handling expenses related to extended family? You know, in our culture, uh, we don't like to use the word black tax, but it's there. So how, how are you guys handling issues to do with, you know, looking after extended family members? For me, I've got siblings, and at some point... I have to contribute towards the school fees and stuff like that. And we have responsibilities that we cannot really just let go of. How are you guys handling that as couples? Um, well, 
Don't you know it? Two men sent here. I've got something to say yeah. about it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. Well, for me, I think. Um, I think it depends, you know, because sometimes you just need to look at your families, you know. I, I, it needs to be flexible because you know incomes might change. Like I think we discussed something about you know, like sometimes your incomes can be different. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it depends, you know, because you can't say to your partner, you know, we need to do half half in terms of paying for my family and your family. I just mm -hmm. think it depends uh, with the situation at that moment. You know, you can't say, you know, if your husband says my mom is not feeling well and then you say, but no, we need to buy groceries for my parents and you know, but they have food at that moment, you know, so I think you just need to be flexible with these things. You, I don't think you need to cast it in stone that it's supposed to be yeah, like this because situations can be, di yeah, they can be different, you know. For example, you know, for me, I just look at the situation that, you know, if my parents have, you know, groceries, I can't say, oh, yeah, you need to buy the groceries now for my 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 family because you we bought for your family i i don't think that's a fair thing to say you know so that's for me that's my experience it's flexible you know you know that's a lot of wisdom for only two months well done baby <laughs> That's a lot of wisdom for only two months because I think when it comes to extended family, we can't let tough conversations slide because we don't want to have them. It's unavoidable. You have to sit down and talk and really yeah. go through. I remember that I was dating Takunda and my, my mom was saying, okay, so he's the first born in his family and both his parents are late and you're aware that he's got a sibling that he needs to look after. And um, you need to make sure that you're there and you make him feel welcome and you make him feel loved and and make sure that no matter what happens, because you're the one who's going into the family and you, you should be aware of all those things prior to being married. Um, I think uh, for me, it's uh, a situation in which I've got, I come from a very um, different background. Um, so we, we, don't, we don't really have black tax. You do what you feel you want to do that particular time. Okay. So if you feel you want to spoil... You. <laughs> oh, that's like, so where I come from. Um, where, well, where I come from is my father is good. so. Um, you, I think, in a lot of cases, you really do because you realize that, um, oh, my grandmother needs this, or my I need to do this for my brother. But sometimes I think maybe I was fo uh, fortunate enough to come from a family that was okay. Um, we were fairly comfortable, and um, and then realizing where I'm married, it's it's the opposite, you know. And um, there's a lot of help that's needed. So, it's initially it's it's a it's a culture shock, and then you begin to try and understand. Wait a minute, what is happening here? And then you get into that mode of even if you want to question, it's plain there right in front of you that help is needed so you begin to reorganize your finances because for some of us it was never about an option it was every month something has to be done and even in the middle of the month you get it so it's it, that was those were the first uh, years of my of my uh, marriage because now we're in a different season everybody who is being helped is growing up People are going to school. They finish school. They yeah, grow up in this. Yeah, families. Yeah. Eventually, so, like you're saying, it's a season. Eventually, that phase will pass. It's a season that, for me, I it was it was a very very tough season because there's so many things um, couples our age at that time achieved that we couldn't achieve because all our money was tied up, you know, in trying to help others, and um, it's it's tough. But I actually look back and I appreciate appreciate the lessons I learned because they then taught me to be able to notice and identify 
gaps in my family. So you see, when I mentioned that my family is generally well to do, because I grew up having everything, but I didn't realize there were certain people who did who made sacrifices for me. You see, so I began to realize that okay, no, but I also have um, my grandmothers. They sacrificed. I started recalling things that my grandmother would do for me. Um, groceries that I would see my grandmother actually bring to our house. It never mm-hmm. occurred to me. So I actually then learned and realized we are black and we live in community and we help one another. And it even got to a point where I have a young sister who passed away uh, um, over a year ago and she left a little child. I have an appreciation that this little child needs to be looked after. I didn't know that before I got married, that you have to extend help. You have to take responsibility for someone else's life. So I, I for, for one, as an individual, saw the challenges. I see the challenges that we faced in the first few years of my marriage is actually a blessing. So even if you, if you have um, a situation where you've got um, extended family, within reason, do what you can do. Mm-hmm. You know? And I guess when you, when you then think about it, when when you're dating and you're asking these tough questions about extended family and finances, would it be wrong for me to marry for financial security, knowing my background? Um, I don't think it's wrong. It's not. Um, <laughs> yes. it's you. You know what you want in your life. <laughs> if you if it's something that you prefer that makes you comfortable, then why not look for what you want? You get it. So I don't think it's wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's my yes. And women generally want security. If a woman feels secure, she does wonders. She yeah, takes care of her home and she does. it's I don't I don't think we were really created to worry about those hectic things. I mean, even in Genesis, it says, man shall till the land. He shall till the land to look for, to look after his family. So, so but that's, it's not a gold digger. Someone can say that, you, you know, you girls are like gold diggers because you're just talking about, hey, I want money. I want to be financially secure and all those things. But like what you were saying, you know, if, 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 if I'm the first one in my family and I've got responsibilities, then definitely I would want to settle down with someone who I can feel can help me out with managing some of those responsibilities. It doesn't make me a gold digger. Just had to put it on. It, it does. It's a, I think it's a very controversial topic. Um, but it's one way, if you really want to delve in it, to say what what is the what is a man looking for? Men have also have their thing, what they are looking for, particularly. I want a woman because A, B, C, A, B, C, and T. And I, as a woman, equally am allowed to say I want a man because I want to be financially secure. I want someone who can take care of me whilst I take care of his and grow his family because his name is moving forward. So whilst mm-hmm. I'm taking care of that, he's taking care of me. So it's a controversial topic, but I think there is nothing wrong. <laughs> I agree 110%. Okay? But can couples live happily when they're having financial problems? Like if you're, if you're, if you're struggling financially, can you really be have a happy marriage? Some couples can be happy actually without money, you know. Um, I've seen certain couples. I think it just depends, like um, what Lorraine was saying about, you know, what you want and goals. Some people don't have, some marriages don't have actually like financial goals. What do you think are some of the most important financial goals that couples need to have? For for my husband and I, we only have one financial goal, and that's to build generational wealth. You know, we come from a from a family of month to month paychecks, month to month payslips, and it's 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 like that for people within our culture, for most people within our culture. But there's something that's very important to us that we've always talked about about building, you know, some sort of generational wealth that even when we pass on our children's children, our great grandchildren will still be enjoying, you know, because you've got families that even during the most difficult times, like right now where we are, they're not going to sleep hungry because they're still enjoying their great grandfather's money, you know, that sort of thing. And that's something that, you know, mm-hmm. people within our culture need to work hard to sort of get out of. So for us, we only have one financial goal and that's to build generational wealth, whether we're going to do it through savings, investments, buying property, 
or starting a business, you know, that lasts for decades. I don't know, but that's really just one of our major financial goals. Um, I'd, I'd, I, I agree with you 100%. It's something that we also, um, is our, our, our goal. Um, you know, when you, when you first get married, you, well, we were fortunate that we, we had a few couples around us who were older who said to us, you need to have a vision. You don't just get married and just go. You don't know where you're going, what you, you want to achieve. You didn't get advice. <laughs> you just stay just... faithful to each other. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just live your life. You don't even have a vision as a family. What is your vision? And mm. um, we're very similar to you in terms of creating generational wealth because, like we, we've been saying all along, that it has been the first years of your marriage where you're supposed to be running, you're digging, going down, you're trying to fill mm -hmm. up uh, a, a hole that, that, that was left by your parents and their parents, and you don't want your children to start from there, to, to have my kids to start picking up from what I should have done. I want them to focus on, mm -hmm. on other things whilst everything else is taken care of by their parents. So that is our vision, to make sure we are liberating our children, their children, and their children's children going forward. Amen to that. Okay, so guys, we're talking about this. I don't even want to add anything. Uh, I think we had a very interesting discussion. I learned a few things. I don't know about you. But when it comes to issues to do with money, people just want to sweep those things under the rug. They don't want to talk about it. And it's a very awkward and difficult conversation when you decide you want to talk about money. Like, um, if you um, the, just like recently, I did an, an episode where I was talking about some of the things that no one told me about getting married, and things to do with money were you know were one of those things to say you know what, no one tells you that you need to be honest and you, you shouldn't wait up until you have a crisis for you to start asking. So how much do we have left? Because that's when you start fighting. It was when you're in the heat of the moment and you're emotional and you're stressed. That's that, that's how arguments just turn. You know. They just get out of hand. Mm -hmm. And for, for us, no one told us about, you know, having those discussions. We sort of have to figure it out on our own. And we do have, you know, like, we have like a monthly meeting to say, we need to sit down and go off our budget. Every single month we do it. It doesn't mean we enjoy it. But, you know, like what Lisa was saying, there's a new generation, and Lorraine also mentioned that, that things are changing and women have a voice. We, you know, we were in a position to say, even if you're a stay-at-home wife, in a position to say, okay, these are our resources. How are we going to spend them? So um, I've learned a lot from you ladies. I just wanted to say thank you guys for joining me today. I loved how you were interacting and making sure that, you know, we're all learning something new. And to the guys at home, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If um, you'd like us to continue to do more topics like this, please let me know. I'm going to put up a poll. Um, of some of the topics that um, were brought to our inbox and you can just decide which one you want us to tackle next. So we're bringing in different people and just spicing things up. I love you lots and see you on the next one.